Guys, write this down. 280 uh, is the intermediate double bottom right now. Is it possible? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good trading day. Uh, we'll get into the particulars in a second. If you are new to the channel, welcome aboard. Uh, if you could be so kind, subscribe so you know exactly uh, when our videos are uploaded. Like the video, it'll always help out the channel so we can try to help you in a non uh, unbiased way and that's kind of what we try to uh, accomplish every day so let's talk about the tape right last night uh, we talked about uh, the jobs number right yesterday's move uh, we lost basically half the jobs number not the, excuse me not the jobs number it's getting a little late in, in, in the day sorry about that um, we gave back half the Jerome Powell rally right the Jerome Powell rally on November the 30th had this whole big move engulfed two weeks worth of selling to, to follow through to lose its range to go back yesterday in a half a bar so what happened today if you watched last night's video um and again we'll get to the individual pivots in a second very very strong day uh we were ready for the sell-off right we were ready for the sell-off something just felt um you know something just felt um not good right that's the best way of saying it it didn't feel good we lost yesterday uh the 10 day moving average on the queues uh when we looked at the spies yesterday we lost the 10 day moving average on the spies and now we are pretty much, we gave back pretty much about 90, 95% uh, of the PAL rally. And now the question is what happens next? So this is where we, you know, this is where we put on our uh, logical hats, right? We put on our logic hats and we see, and we let the market dictate to us what happens next. So here's the levels that we have to watch, right? The bottom of the PAL prior to the PAL rally was this 279 area. You see the lows from, November the 29th, right? It was uh, 279 in the queues. The next day it was uh, 280, right? Today we, dub we double bottomed off that 280. Everybody see it? Today's low is 280 and a quarter. The Powell uh, low was 280, right? So 280 becomes uh, intermediate, pretty strong uh, area that the bulls need to defend, right? Uh, so far today, they challenged that 280. And again, if you look at the indexes today, again, you got some pretty big moves. Dow lost 500 yesterday, lost another 350 today. Uh, NASDAQ lost to 200 yesterday, lost another 200 today. So it's not pretty, right? It's definitely not feeling good. Uh, three days ago, we were feeling a lot better uh, when, the, when the bulls kind of negated the strong jobs number, right? But now we're kind of faced with the reality of what potentially could happen next. So guys, write this down. 280 uh, is the intermediate double bottom right now. Is it possible? Uh, is it possible, you know, we have a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Of course, anything's possible. That's, you know, that tends to happen uh, once in a while when there's a double bottom, especially faced with, it, with, it, with an event, right? An engulfing event. Here's also a flip side, right? If we start confirming down below this 280 level, right? This 280 level here, and take down this 279, then we're gonna be in the crosshairs, right? Of getting a measure potential move to the 50 day moving average. This is where, and again, I don't wanna kind of jump the gun and talk about what potentially could happen after the 50 day moving average, but you guys already know, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, you could see what happens after, you know, when you, when you lose the 50 day moving average. Here's you lost the 50 day moving average, you're gonna go a lot lower. So if we start losing this 280, uh, 280, 279 area. Uh, we're gonna go down to this 277 do or die area uh, for the bulls and any close below the 50 day moving average, it's not gonna be a pretty thing. And again, for all you guys who lived through the last, you know, eight, nine, 10 months that we've been primarily underneath the 50 day moving average, you kind of know no matter what happens, no matter what you think, stocks will go lower. Sure, there'll be days. Uh, that the market will go higher and there'll be multiple days that move higher and you can see it by the illustration here below right you have multiple days up ultimately go down multiple days up multiple days down ultimately we go to the bottom of the range here so before that happens before we have a completely different conversation below the 50-day moving average we already know what's facing us right so if we hold again the 280 level we might start rallying tomorrow if we start losing the 279 
uh, we are going to be faced with a 277 reality of a back test to the 50 day moving average. Now, does the market usually break the first time it tests the 50 day moving average? No, it doesn't. Usually you'll have uh, one attempt and then the market will be bought generally off that, off that test, uh, especially retest of the 50 day moving average. But then it's almost like putting a bandaid on a severed head, right? We already know uh, there's a potential casualty uh, upper head, but the most important part is, you know, you, you, at least you'll have some time, and especially if you're an investor and you're watching this for the first time. Remember, above the 50 day generally is good, right? Below the 50 day, there's nothing good about it. So before that happens, let's worry about the 279, 280 level. And if there is a wash, we'll definitely be prepared uh, for tomorrow's action, right? Primarily. Uh, you know, again, it's very, very tough for me to turn around, just like I said yesterday, right? You know, 99% of my game plan going into today was to the sell side. I, again, even, even that I'm aware that we potentially could have a dead cat bounce, 100%, right? 100% uh, of my game plan for tomorrow is, you know, possibly taking down this 279 level and going uh, into the 50 day moving average. We'll see. Again, I, you know, I'm not naive. I understand uh, the market doesn't have to go straight down. The market doesn't have to do anything. That's the whole point. We're just trying, uh, as we say every single night, we're just trying to put ourselves in a position that we are aware that we're not uh, caught with, with our pants below our ankles and surprised what's going to happen, right? We know there was a double bottom taste. So we know if they test that double bottom again and trap shorts and go red to green, yeah, I think, think the market will rally. But Again, like I said a few minutes ago, there's a flip side. We start taking down this 280, 279. Uh, we should get a test to the 50-day moving average. So that's kind of where how my thinking is uh, going into uh, tomorrow. Now, the worst thing, in my opinion, right, especially after a three-day, no, especially a two-day sell-off is the, the last thing the bulls want to do, and, and it happened again today, right? If you guys remember, uh, you know, the future the futures gapped up a little bit. That's the last thing you want to do. Any reversals or intermediate reversals you want to see is for fear, right? It's for fear, it's for carnage, it's for anxiety, it's 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 emotional baggage, right? We, we don't have that yet. We, none, none of that is ever going to happen if the, the Nasdaq, you know, gaps up 40, 50 handles. You need you need a rever you need a reversal of a bottom level. The only reversal I could see possible is having off this uh, 277 50 day moving average. We'll see about that. So going into tomorrow, uh, let's see how the market plays out. I'm going to give the, the, the bears probably two hours, right? Maybe not even, maybe the first candle of the day, uh, considering we, we only trade six candles for the day, they're all in the hourly, uh, I'm, you know, there's only six hours. I'm gonna give the bull, the bears the benefit of the doubt in the first hour. If we start seeing that the market can't crack uh, today's bottom ranges and anything that's acting strong, that's having some deep out of the money, especially weekly calls will start to, uh, we'll start to pay attention back to the upside. But at least again for tomorrow, I wanna give the bears uh, the benefit of the doubt. My game plan is for the sell side. And if it plays out the right way, hopefully we'll be having a conversation at this uh, 277 level. We'll see, right? We'll see. Again, I don't care about being right. Um, I, all I care about is that you should is being prepared on all type of scenarios and being prepared for your game plan to be confirmed or maybe it doesn't, but that's the whole point of trading, being prepared and being more prepared than the person uh, on the other side of your trade. So again, as you can imagine, like we talked about last night, uh, Amazon, Apple, right? Tesla. I mean, everything got hit today, right? Uh, everything got hit. We talked about Goldman Sachs. Remember we talked about the financials, right? How crappy the financials were. Again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second, but this is not a great sign. It really is not that uh, everything is getting hit. The leaders are getting hit, but more important, Apple got hit today, right? And you know, it's very, very tough. It, it's it really, really tough uh, to turn around and look at a market strength if the leader, arguably, right? You can make an argument that the leader for the last you know, 10, 20 years has been Apple, right? Uh, you know, financially, uh, product-wise, cult status, uh, it all boils out to Apple. Apple today lost the 50-day moving averages. Again, we say all the time that 50-day breakdown is super duper important. You can see here, 50-day breakdown only a few days ago before the Powell candle had two days worth of selling. Here was the first day, it's tomorrow, part two. Again, they came with a lot of 134, uh, 140 weekly puts, a lot of 135 weekly puts. So we'll definitely watch in there. So let's talk about today's action. Uh, again, as you can as you can possibly tell, even from last night's video, yeah, we were sell buys. That's the whole point. We were prepared for it. Uh, we got our pivots. We got our, you know, it was really, it was, it was pretty strong. I mean, that's the best way of saying it. I'm not, I don't sit there and do a whole touchdown dance. Uh, the pivots are the pivots. And if you believe in technical analysis, 
uh, you know, every you know, we were prepared. I mean, that's the most important part. So uh, let's talk about this. Uh, CRM uh, yesterday broke down below that 142 earnings low. Uh, today's confirmation was 132.88. If it confirms, can flush more. Ironically, and again, you can you can make a case that hey, yes, yesterday went down 10, and it did. Uh, if you caught the trade today, you know, it went down, you know, not a lot. You know, it went down like you know, a little less than two bucks. Here's the break here below this uh, 32.88. I uh, went down to 13090, so you know a couple of bucks, nothing big, uh, before it kind of you know firmed up a little bit. Uh, Tesla again, it's it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, didn't close like I thought, but nice, really nice trade. So yesterday broke down uh, 187.50, 187. If it builds well, it can flush. Today's pivot, and this is kind of what we talked about uh, last night, 180 and a half and 179 held twice. Buyers were coming in for uh, the 175, 170 weekly puts. And here was Tesla, right? Here was Tesla, you know, nice move here. Took out the 80, took out the 79, right? Took out the 80, took out the 79, the range we talked about in last night's video, uh, went down to 75. You know, I'd like to see if maybe Tesla goes sideways for maybe a day or two uh, and see if that if, if today's channel could get confirmed for more downside. We'll see, we'll see. But today was definitely uh, a really, really solid move on uh, Tesla. Apple got smashed and they also uh, I forgot what the news was, man. It was so I feel like I feel like this day was such a, so long as far as like uh, news and stuff like that. But uh, Apple uh, one forty five sixty five is the fifty day support. Again, there's no bigger support on intermediate time frames. If it builds below, it can flush. Here was uh, Apple, right? We talked about Apple. Here's Apple. It took down this channel right here. This one forty five sixty five went all the way down to a little under. Uh, 42. I think it has more downside to go. Goldman Sachs, we talked about it last night in the video, got absolutely manhandled. I'm sure the rest of the financials did, but there's no reason to look at all of them. All you just need is one. Uh, Goldman, 369, 30, 369 for builds below uh, can flush. Here is Goldman Sachs, right? Took down the 369, 30 and went all the way down to 360. If they confirm one more day, it'll see 355. Uh, Target, not a big move. Uh, yesterday, Target got smashed. Uh, 154.75, it builds below. Uh, lost the 50-day yesterday. Not a big move on, on Target, um, at least until I logged off. Uh, yeah, not a big move. It took out, it took down, uh, it took down 74. Uh, it took down 74. Uh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong chart. It, it is getting late. Uh, yeah, not a big move. It took down that 54.79. Uh, went down to like 53 and change and rallied back. But again, target looks lower uh, as well. Uh, Zeus, not Zeus, I called Zeus. ZS, uh, 119, if it builds below, can flush. Again, part of that cloud space. Uh, again, we took out the 19, went all the way down to 115, which is uh, the lower Bollinger Band. You know, this thing is one, one day away from losing macro. Matter of fact, guys, let's set an alert, right? Let's set an alert for the bottom channel here. As you can see here, I love setting alerts. You know, let's set an alert in this thing, first of all, to today's lows. Uh, but if it starts losing this bottom channel here, right? If it starts losing this bottom channel here, you could have a macro leg done. So big, big moves, right? Big moves everywhere. Uh, Netflix, 310, if it builds below, can flush. Again, you kind of get the picture, right? Netflix lost the 310 little range here. The five-day moving average went down to 303. Uh, if the market goes lower, I still like uh, Netflix for one more day. Uh, Qs, right? Qs, ETF players, uh, 286 if it builds below. I thought the initial move was going to be at 284.50s, right? That's where the trade was. And then next thing I know, it just kept on going lower and lower and lower and lower. Just everything got destroyed. And the Qs went all the way down to 280. And again, we talked about uh, the line in the sand for the Qs. And Amazon, definitely one of the better ones today as well. Uh, Amazon, we talked about this last night in the video as well. 9080, 9060, the last two areas of daily support. If it builds below, it can flush. Here is Amazon. Uh, they were coming for the 90. They were coming for the 87 weeklies. Went all the way down uh, to 87.90. Guys, this thing is close. Very, very close uh, from a macro breakdown uh, as well. So let's definitely keep an eye and continue to keep an eye on Amazon. And I believe that was it, right? I believe that was it. Yeah, that was it. So listen, good day. I mean, good solid session. Uh, and guess what? It's over, right? It's absolutely over tomorrow. Uh, you don't know if we're going to get a dead cat bounce. You don't know if tomorrow is going to be uh, another move lower. But again, at the end of the day, like I say all the time, be prepared or don't come at all, right? If you, if, you, if you don't come strong, right? If you don't come correct, don't come at all. And that's what she said. Guys, have a great night, everybody. 
Enjoy your night. Enjoy your life. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.